Joining me now is the host of the Trish Regan Show, Trish Regan. Trish, great to have you back on the program. Thanks for being here. Good to see you, Jen. You know, <laughs> Romney mentions denial in that piece, but it seems like he and, and his anti-Trump colleagues are the real ones who are in denial. And I'm just curious, why can't these established re re establishment Republicans push their Trump hating aside and just unite for the greater good, especially given all that the country is going through right now? Look, I think it's really important right now that conservatives remember what conservatives' goals are, and that's to ensure freedom, to ensure everybody's ability to prosper, everybody's shot at the American dream. There's some really important principles, in other words, at stake right here, right now. And I think that as we look at an economy, and, you know, that, that's my expertise, as I look at this economy, which is just quickly, quickly sort of disintegrating into, into frankly, a, a country and an economy that we shouldn't be in, I, I, I'm really troubled. And I think that, that every conservative should be. And by the way, it's not even like whether you're conservative or liberal. These are realities, Jen. We are facing a, a recession. I believe we're in one right now. And unless we get some people in the White House and over there on Capitol Hill that, you know, have a few brain cells, frankly, and understand policy and its effects on people, we're going to continue to suffer. And so it, it's really important that whether it be Mitt Romney or Donald Trump or Ron DeSantis or anyone else, like everybody's going to kind of be on the same page here. We've got an economic train wreck that's going to cost us our future. And we need to realize yeah. that. Yeah, and everybody feels it, right? Republican or Democrat, independent. Uh, you go to the gas station, you go to the grocery store. It's just getting worse by mm -hmm. the day. And there's new polling out uh, from Harvard Harris shows that 60 percent of the country right now has doubts about Biden's fitness for office, while another 71 percent of the country says that Biden should not mm -hmm. run for reelection. And Trish, you know, I think whoever runs, they're going to have to appeal uh, to suburban women. I mean, how is a Republican going to appeal to those voters? And do you think that maybe Hillary or Kamala would resonate with them. No, no, I don't think Hillary or Kamala would resonate. Um, you know, they, there's some Republican women that I think might resonate. It's it's honestly not that hard. I, I, I don't know why they, they try and sort of second guess themselves and put forward people that just don't have that much appeal or much in, in common with your average American woman or man, for that matter. I mean, I think a lot of these social issues that you're seeing right now, Jen, they're really, really important to women. So that will matter. And, and, and I think Republicans need to think about it sort of strategically in that, yes, you need the base and you need the enthusiasm. I get it for the base. You need people with good policy chops. Like, that's just the reality, right? We're seeing the disaster of having an administration that really doesn't understand policy the way one would think. So you need people that are smart. You need people that are going to resonate. And you need people, this is the key, right, that don't just appeal to the base, Jen, but also are going to bring everybody else in there in the middle because elections are often won by those people in the middle. So that's got to be part of their strategy. And, and I just think it's important. I would, I would keep, if I, if I were a Republican strategist, which I'm not, but if I were, I would keep zeroing in on the economic issues because those pocketbook issues, those resonate with women. And in terms of some of the social issues, it, the idea that your child is being taught topics and subjects in school at a very, very young age that you wouldn't be willing to discuss with them at that point at, at, at home, I think that also is another place where women sort of perk up and they say, wait a second, is, is this big government stepping in in ways that are, it may just not be appropriate? So, Trish, who do you think does check those boxes? Who resonates with those voters? Because obviously, you know, Trump is very polarizing. The left wants to do everything they can to ensure he doesn't run again. It looks like he's going to run again. Who could potentially be uh, that running mate if he does run again? I mean, there's a lot of names that are being thrown out there. DeSantis is one of them. Trump said in a recent Newsmax interview that uh, he's not opposed to, to working with DeSantis. What do you think that looks like? Because, as you said, it does have to be somebody uh, that can draw in those voters that maybe they voted for Biden and they're not so happy with how the country is uh, going right now. Look, I think DeSantis is for sure a rising star in the Republican Party. And I, I, I actually know someone, a suburban mom herself from the Northeast that just recently relocated to Florida. And one of the reasons, Jen, was because why? Well, they're not teaching things in school that are going to be so out of touch with my values. So I think that he's got a lot going for him. I mean, there's a lot of 
There's a lot of other people out there, including women, right, that, that might want to team up on the ticket that uh, would help to maybe soften the image. If Donald Trump were to run, how does he help bring in those independent women? But ultimately, I mean, I, look, I'm just kind of a sucker for policy. And I just say, look, who's got the best tax policy? Who's got the best energy policy? Who's going to create jobs? Who's going to keep us safe? And I think these are issues that most women throughout the country, those are boxes they just want checked off. And so if you can put a team together that really is going to promise to bring our economy back to where it was and to keep us safe and to ensure that big government isn't really overstepping its reach, say, in the classroom, then I think you've got a winning ticket. Well, I was going to say, you know, it's it's interesting to look at the list of potential contenders on the Democrat side as we go into 2024. You know, the question is, is Biden going to face a primary challenger? There's a back and forth from the White House as to whether or not he's running. They say he is, but Kamala kind of had to reword a statement uh, that she made in an interview saying that, you know, she'll be there as his running mate uh, if he if he chooses to run. Uh, names that have been thrown out there, of course, Hillary, Gavin Newsom, Stacey Abrams, Michelle Obama. Uh, Howard Stern has even said that he might consider uh, as well as Illinois Governor J.B. Pritzker. How, how do you see that going? I think they're going to have to primary him. You know, I can remember um, was, when I was a little kid, Jimmy Carter getting primaried by Ted Kennedy. Um, it, it, didn't, it didn't pan out, and Kennedy didn't get the spot, and Reagan won. So maybe that was all for the best. But nonetheless, I think that the only chance the Democrats have at 2024 is to put someone new in. And someone who's not, Jen, associated with the, the sort of, frankly, the stench, right, of this current White House, because people are sort of recoiling in horror because they're so concerned about the direction of the, the country. So you can't have anybody that's there around him right now. I, I would think that would put Pete Buttigieg and Kamala Harris and some others to the side. So I'd be looking, if I were a Democrat strategist, again, which I'm not, I would be looking at people that would offer something different. So that's where, say, uh, Gavin Newsom comes into the mix. And by the way, did you see the commercial he's been running down in Florida? I think that he, he, <laughs> uh -huh. he would love to be the sort of anointed one to go against Biden. And frankly, the Democrats would be smart to, to have some other strategy. Yeah, I think so. It's not uh, looking good for them as we look towards 2024. Trish Regan, it's always great to have you here. Thanks for good joining you, us. Jen. Have a good night.